This Morning, conference will Mike. now be recorded. If you'll lead us in a psalm of praise this morning. Climb, climb up sunshine mountain, heavenly breezes blow. Climb, climb up sunshine mountain, faces all aglow. Turn, turn from sin and doubting, look into the sky. Climb, climb up sunshine mountain, you and I. You got a shoe, I got a shoe, all the good children got a shoe. When you get to heaven, you're going to put on the shoe, you're going to show it all over, Lord, heaven, 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 and show it all over, God, heaven. You got a rope. I got a rope, all the good children got a rope. When we get to heaven, we're going to put on the rope. We're going to show it all over, Lord, heaven, heaven, heaven. We're going to show it all over, Lord, heaven. You got a crown, I got a crown, all the good children got a crown. When we get to heaven, we're going to put on the crown. We're going to shine all over, Lord, heaven, heaven, heaven. We're going to shine all over, God, heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Jelry. Hallelujah. Blessed morning. Lord, Abba, we come before you, Father God, with humble hearts, Abba. We come before you, Father God, thanking you, Lord, for the sunshine, Father God, that shines down, Lord, on upon us. We thank you, Abba, that your light shines in us, Father God, <clears throat> and that we can, Father God, send it forth into the world, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day that you have made, this day that we can rejoice and be glad in, this day that we can say that you are our rock, our refuge, our strength, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you are our Adonai Megen Be'adi. You are our shield that surrounds us, Father. We thank you, Lord, that as we go into this day, Father God, you are protecting us, Father God. You are surrounding us, Lord. You are infilling us, Lord. You are saturating us, Father God, with your presence, Abba. And we yield to you today and every day, Father God. Our arms are wide open, our hearts are open, our minds are open to you, Father God. Lord, I ask that you would search us, Lord. See if there's any wicked ways in us, Lord. Bring to our attention anything that needs to be addressed, anything that would block us from you, Abba. And may we quickly, Father God, get those situations addressed, Lord, that we may come before you with clean hands and pure hearts, Abba. Lord, as we come to sup at your table this morning, Father God, to have you uh, just teach us, Father God, this morning. I pray that we will be open to receive everything that you are given, Lord, that we would glean, Father God, everything, Lord, that we not leave anything on the table, Lord, but we would allow you, Father God, we will allow you, Holy Spirit, to have your place in our lives, to have your place in this moment, Lord. So, Lord, just come and speak to each person individually and corporately this morning, Father God. And may we not leave here, Father God, not changed, not increased in another level, Father God. But may we, Father God, use what you have given us this morning, Father God, to bless others that we encounter today and every day. We give you all honor. We give you all glory. In Yeshua's name, amen. 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 God bless you all this morning. We thank God once again for this opportunity to gather ourselves together. And we know that God is in the midst of us because he said that if two or three 
gather or touch and agree. And by our coming together, hallelujah, we know that he is in the midst of us. And also any petition that we put before him, hallelujah, that is in line with his will, we know that we have it. So we just thank God for each and every one of you this morning. And Father, we pray for your grace on today. Heavenly Father, as we go into this word this morning, we ask, oh God, that you will speak through us in the mighty name of Jesus. Open up our hearts, our minds, our mouth, oh God, our spirit, so that we can receive from you in Jesus' name. You are the teacher. Teach us this morning. Let us know what the will of the Father is that we may align our lives with you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're back in Exodus, the 33rd chapter today, verse 16, the B part of verse 16, and we'll look at it. Um, what's read here in our commentary is from the New Living Translation. It says, your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. Your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. And in the King James, it reads the entirety of 16, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou go with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And throughout this past week, we have been um, in this particular passage of scripture where we see that Moses has uh, met with the Lord in the tent of meeting, which was positioned, positioned outside of the camp. There was a time when uh, the, the tent of meeting was right in the midst of the children of Israel as they came out of Egypt. Amen. But because of their disobedience, hallelujah, God said he would not be in the midst of them and gave instruction to Moses to set up that tent of meeting far away from their camp. Amen. So Moses is in uh, this tent of meeting with the Lord and, and the Lord has told him to get up and, and take the children to the, Lord, the promised land. But he says, I'm not going to go with you because the people are stiff necked. Instead, I'm going to send an angel. And so Moses communicates not um, and the, the scripture says, as a friend, he talked with God. He went in that place and he pleaded with God. He had a conversation or uh, a discourse with the Lord. And again, if you haven't read it, just go back and read it. Um, and here in this particular uh, verse, he had pleaded with the Lord and the Lord said that he would go in verse 14. And he said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. Amen. And then Moses again says, if thy presence go not with me, then, then don't let us leave this place. He said, if you're not going to go, we don't want to be led by an angel. We want to be led by you. And if you don't go, we're going to stay right here. Hallelujah. And that's one of the resolves that we should have. We don't want to go, do, be, or anything without God's presence. We want him to lead us to where he would have us to go. So let's go look at the commentary because we're going to be looking at, at several scriptures um, on this morning. It says, okay, God pulled his people out from among the Egyptians. He led them to a mountain in the desert and gave them a set of laws and teachings that would distinguish them as his own. We know that's Mount Sinai. Yet during this season at Sinai, Moses appeals to none of that. 
In other words, he doesn't try to flatter God, you know, with how he brought them through the Red Sea and, and how before they even left Egypt, how he showed his power uh, to Pharaoh and to the children of Israel uh, by the mighty acts that he did there, nor how he gave the commandments when Moses went up into the presence of God on Mount Sinai. He doesn't bring all of that up. Hallelujah. He says, during this season at Sinai, Moses appeals to none of that. He doesn't talk about Israel's cultural distinctives or its geographic destiny in the promised land. He doesn't bring up their superb God-given moral code or their unique worship practices or their intensely specific kosher laws. Uh, why? Because these are not the marks of a set apart nation. Mm, okay, now, there's some things that we hold on to. Amen. And, and we, you know, try to, uh, you know how you would huff on your fingers and then uh, rub against your chest like, you know, now you have arrived. He says, no, these are not the marks of a set apart nation. The key variable or the one identifying characteristic that sets his people apart is that God's presence is among them. It's God's presence is among them. And when we talk about the presence of God, we're talking as, 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 Moses said, Lord, let me see your glory. Uh, uh, let me see your face. I want it. It's when we are in that place with God that we know he is there. Hallelujah. His presence. We can sit and have a face-to-face -face conversation with him. Glory be to God. We know that he is right there with us. It's a place of occupation. The word says in Psalm 91, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. So it is a place. His presence is a place. It's not a feeling. Hallelujah. It is a place. He says this is the key variable, the identifying characteristic that sets his people apart is that God's presence is among them. That speaks volumes about our efforts to be separate from the world. All right, I got a note here. Let me see where I'm going with this. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 16. That speaks about, let me write this down, 2 Corinthians 14 through 16. That speaks volumes about our, our efforts, our efforts, our works to be separate from the world. All right, let's, let's look here. Let's look here at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and let's look at verse 14, and let's go through 16. He says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, which is an unbeliever? Verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. His presence, his presence dwells with us. Hallelujah. His, hey, his, his dwelling with us sets us apart because he doesn't dwell with everybody. Glory to God. He says here, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them. That's a place. And walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. 
And so here's the call that, that Paul is giving to the Corinthian church. You can't mix. He says, therefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. That means to be distinguished, to be marked out. He says, be separate, saith the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. Yesterday morning, early yesterday morning, the Lord began to deal with me about the, the uh, children of Belial or the sons and the daughters of Belial versus the sons of God. I'm going to be doing a live teaching on that uh, in, in the very near future. Amen. Because that thing came so strong in my spirit. There is a separation. There is a separation. And when God dwells in us, and we're going to see throughout the commentary, amen, as we are in that place with him, as we dwell in his presence, amen, there's a mark on us. We're marked. We don't remain the same. We become separate. Hallelujah. Okay, let, let me get back because... Ooh, okay, Lord, help us, Jesus. He says, God has called us to be set apart for his pleasure and his purposes. Hallelujah. Holy is the biblical word for this separation. Or, or another word that we use is sanctification. To be set apart, called aside, called out from the ecclesia. We're a set apart, called out people. He says, but a particular, watch this now, but a particular lifestyle can only accomplish so much. A unique lifestyle gives numerous people around the world a sense of identity, but it doesn't set them apart. Okay, I, I got to go here. Let's look at, um, I thought I put a footnote. Okay, maybe I did. Let me keep reading. But I highlighted this. A particular lifestyle. See, this, this generation that we're in today, they big on lifestyle. We're big on, on our style of life. Hallelujah. But he says that accomplishes only so much. See, it ain't about your lifestyle. Let's go to 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter. Oh, glory to God. 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're going to look at 15 and 16. Hallelujah. Uh, let me go back to 13. It says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. So this separation is a, a separation, hallelujah, unto holiness. Now let's go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 11. All right, let me highlight this. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. So let's go back and see what he's talking about here. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, let me just go and pick up at verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, 
not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Okay, and, and, and here in, in Peter's letter, he is looking at end times. He's looking at the times before the coming of the Lord and also, hallelujah, you know, after the coming of the Lord, what it's going to be like here. So if you go through and read this, he's dealing with rapture and post-rapture. And the Lord's coming again in judgment here on the earth. He says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. I got to keep reading. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. This is the day of salvation. He says, when you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. We can see all the signs. The handwriting is on the wall. It's in the sky. It's in the land. We can see that the Lord's coming is at hand. And he says, even at the door. Glory be to God. So what kind of people should we be? He says a unique lifestyle gives numerous people around the world a sense of identity, but it doesn't set them apart. So the plea is be set apart. Be set apart. What sets God? Let me get back to the commentary. Let me get back. Hallelujah. He says the, the key variable, the one identifying characteristic that sets this people apart is that God's presence is among them. That speaks volumes about our efforts to be separate from the world. God has called us to be set apart for his pleasure and purposes. It's all about him. Holy is the biblical word for it, but a particular lifestyle can accomplish only so much. A unique lifestyle gives numerous people around the world a sense of identity, but it doesn't set them apart. So while we're striving, while we're striving, for identity in the world by the world standards. We're striving by the world. We're trying to achieve a lifestyle by the world standards. My Lord, it ain't setting us apart. It ain't sanctifying us. It's only when we get in God's presence it's only when we become sanctified and we know that every day when we're in his presence, in his word, in prayer, hallelujah, in fellowship with him, glory be to God that the sanctifying work of the word, hallelujah, is setting us apart. It's calling us out. It's calling us to come aside. It's calling us to be separate from this world. It's the work of Holy Spirit in our lives. What sets God's people apart is his presence. And all that his presence entails including his voice. All right, I got a footnote here.
Matthew 26, verse, okay, Matthew 26, 73, and Acts 4, 13. These are my notes as I was reading this morning. So we're going to go look at the scripture. Matthew 26, 73 talks about Peter's speech and Acts 4 and 13, Peter and John's boldness. So let, let's go there and look. Matthew 26, Matthew 26 and verse 27. Uh-uh. That's not it. Let me see. It had to do with... No, nope. okay, so maybe I got the numbers. Let me see, 27 and 26. Let me see, because what I'm looking for is where Peter, remember the Lord told Peter that he would deny him? Okay, let me see. Uh, Peter. Uh, where he would deny him. Jesus told Peter, you're going to deny me. The Lord told, he said, Peter, you know, Peter was pretty obnoxious and, and uh, he was quick to speak. And he says, Lord, none of these things that you're talking about is going to happen to you. You know, I'm going to be with you or what have you. And the Lord said to him, you, he would deny. Let me see here. We want to look in Matthew. Okay, 2675, I believe that's it. All right, let's go here. Y'all just bear with me because this, this early morning, he told them that, okay, in 75, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. 73 is what I want, verse 73. And after a while, so he's following Jesus. You know, Jesus is being crucified and, 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 you know, Peter is there on the scene. Watch this. And after a while came unto him. Now, this is the third time that he denies the Lord, but watch this. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, surely thou also are one of them for thy speech bereath thee or betrays you. See, when you are in the presence of God, there's a change that takes place. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't talk like you used to talk. Okay. And, and three times here, there were different ones that identified him. And he kept saying, I don't know him. I don't know him. But this time, what this man said to him was, your speech gives you away that you've been with him. Okay, so let's go to Acts. Let's see what happens after the Holy Ghost come. Glory to God. And this is after Peter and John saw the man laying by the temple gate. And they said, we don't have silver and gold, but such as we have, you know, in the name of Jesus, rise up, look on us. And the man got up and began to leap and took up his bed. And so now they bring Peter and John before the council because this, is, this, this man had been laid at this gate for a long time. And, and so it created an, a stirring, an uproar. Hallelujah. It's time for some uproar in our cities. And, and it's going to be by a set apart people. Now, verse 13 says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, watch this, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marvel. Now, who is the they? The they is the Pharisees and the Sadducees that, that made up this Sanhedrin council. And they were the ones that were to judge everything as it related to the Jews. Hallelujah, and the high, along with the high priest. Amen. But when they saw Peter and John, what's it say? They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They were in his presence for three years. Glory be to God. And there was a notable 
change in their life, but what made it different now? And what's the difference from Peter saying, I know not the man, though his speech gave him away up until this time, the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost. That's why it's important to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is what separates us out. What did Jesus tell him? He says, look here, I want you to wait until you are in due with power from on high. And they went into an upper room. Y'all know the story, but in case somebody doesn't know it, they went in that upper room, 120 of them. What did they say about uh, Peter and John? See, they were fishermen. They were Galilean fishermen. And they said that they were unlearned and ignorant men. See, it doesn't matter what people call you. It doesn't matter what lifestyle. It doesn't matter what your culture says or your nationality. Hallelujah. What matters is us being filled with the Holy Ghost. They can say you don't have no education. God bless everybody that's going to school and got degrees. Hallelujah. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost, your degree don't set you apart. It don't set you apart. It don't mean you've been in the presence of the Lord. It doesn't put a special identification on you that the word of God is talking about. Moses said, if your presence, if your presence doesn't go with the, don't let us leave this place. So I don't care what I achieve in this life. What's important to me is having the presence of God. Because without him, I can do nothing but fail. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He says, they perceived that they were ignorant men and they, they marveled. They wondered. Why? Because they spoke with boldness. There was power evident in their lives. They told this man, look on us. And the man looked on them, got power and strength that he was able to get up from that lame position that he had been where somebody carried him in front of the temple every day in the front of the temple gate and laid him there so he could beg. No longer would he be a beggar. They saw the demonstration of power. Jesus said, don't go yet. He says, wait until you're in due with power from on high. Then you shall be witnesses unto me. See, the set apart life makes us witnesses. What did Jesus say? Let me go back into Mark 16. Hallelujah. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth what you preach and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Look what he says here. And these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. See, the Pharisees and Sadducees thought they had something on these fishermen. Can I tell you something? And we talk about it all the time. We talk about it all the time. See, when you're in his presence and his presence dwells in you, it don't matter where you wear a collar or where you wear janitorial jean uh, denims. Okay, it doesn't matter. We, we tend to separate clergy from laity. But when there's the presence of Holy Ghost, there is no separation. You had 120 disciples that involved men and women. There were men and women. No doubt many of them of low degree. Hallelujah. I believe Mary Magdalene was one of them. Glory. Hallelujah the presence of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. And they got in that place and they were on one accord and the Holy Spirit came in and filled all of them that were in the house. They didn't have to take a language. Glory be to God, God gave them a language. Supernaturally, 
They learned how to speak in other tongues. No, they didn't learn it. Supernaturally, they just spoke. They just spoke. When the power came, hallelujah, you didn't need no special. The power, the spirit of God was the one who was at work in them. Hallelujah. And caused them to be set apart, to stand out. Let me get back to the commentary because I tell you the truth. I tell you, I feel God this morning in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me go back. It says, what sets God's people apart is his presence. And all that his presence entails. Hallelujah. When you're in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. You can be down in the dumps, but when the presence of God, we went to the men's conference last night. And my husband, let me tell you, he's been retired for a couple of months. And every now and then he gets these little gigs and, and he worked from, you know, he was up early. He does his five o'clock and he was up and I went back to sleep after the prayer line. And when I got up, he was gone and he worked. I would check on him throughout the day. He got in just after five o'clock and he was tired. He was tired. He says, if I can just get it, he says, I got to push through this. We had an appointment on Wednesday or Thursday. What's today? Uh, today's Saturday. So Thursday, we had an appointment. He was, when we got ready to go, he felt a pushback. He says, I got to press if I just get there. See, that was his resolve. If I just get there, I know God is with me. God is going to give me the help I need to get dressed. Hallelujah. I said to him, well, honey, I'll drive. You can, he says, no, I'm a drive. Amen. The press, the pressing into his presence. And sometimes we give up. We give up. We allow the enemy to push us away rather than leaning forward to get to the present. Let me tell you something. I ran track when I was in, we call it now middle school. And, and see, I messed up when I got into high school, but I had a trainer who wanted to train me for the Olympics. For, for years, I couldn't go to the Olympics. I couldn't watch the Olympics because I should have been there. Amen. But I messed up. So that's OK. I run now for Jesus. But see, there's a technique that when you get close to that finish line, you lean in with your upper body. You'll let because if your head crosses before your feet crosses, you're in there. And a lot of times we don't press into his presence. Hallelujah. But we let all the cares of life push us back. We let all the cares of life get in the way. All of our agenda moves us away. Hallelujah, trying to create a lifestyle that won't amount to anything, that won't separate you part for the work of the Lord. All right, I need to finish. I need to finish. Our lifestyle matters to God, of course but only as it flows out of our relationship with him. See, when we get into his presence, he leads us and guides us. So re remember, it's all about his pleasure and his purpose. When we get into the presence of God, hallelujah, our whole outlook on life changes. Because now we understand that, that there's a life that's worldly and there is, a, there is Zoe or the life of God. And when you taste and see how good God is, all you want is the God life. Hallelujah. Make no mistake about it. You may have to tell some family and friends this. Make no mistake about it. That when you serve the devil, the devil will bless you. He'll bless you until he got you all wrapped up. Hallelujah. 
and then he'll strip you of everything he blessed you with to make you feel like nothing and you want to take your own life. But when God blesses you, he says, no man can curse you. Hallelujah. When we come into his presence and he begins to pour out upon us, glory be to God, hallelujah. You may go through some changes and some losses, and, but you'll never lose anything, hallelujah, that, 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 that's more valuable it's more valuable than what God has given you, his life. He gives us his life. Hallelujah. It, and, and lifestyle only matters to him when it flows out of our relationship with him. That's why he says you don't have to take thought for tomorrow. What you'll put on what you'll eat, whether you'll have a roof over your head. You don't have to worry about those things because your heavenly father knows you have need. But he says, seek ye first his kingdom. Get into a place to understand his kingdom. He says, all these things will just be added. They'll just be added. He says, what matters more is our communication with him. And central to that communication is our capacity for hearing. Hearing him and sensing with our spiritual senses, his presence. That's what matters to him is our communion. The Lord loves when we meet with him in the morning. He loves, hallelujah, to wake us up and to just whisper to us how he loves us. And we whisper back to him. My grandson spent the night with us last night. And, and yes, he, he slept in our bed. Glory be to God. And about 4.30, he, he woke up and he says, when's mom coming for me? When's mommy coming for me? And I said, she'll be here later. Come on here and lay down. Hallelujah. And he laid, I just laid hands on him and just began to soothe him. But he was ready to get up. I said, okay, you helping me this morning because I got to get this lesson. So let's get up. Praise God. And, and that's what the Lord loves. He loves our attention. Our I thank God for those of you that join with us at 6 a.m. But I hope that, that the Lord woke you up at 2 or 3, hallelujah, or when you hang up from here, that you'll have your own alone time for his presence, where you're just in his presence, where you're just communicating with him. Many times I get off the line and I just lay there or go back to lay down and say, God, what do you want to do today? What do you want to do? Not what I want to do. I could come up with a whole list of things that need to be done. But my thing is, Lord, what do you want to do today? How can I please you today? Glory to God. I don't try to set my own agenda anymore. I have my list of to-dos. Glory be to God. But God, what is it that you want to do? I allow him the opportunity to interrupt my day. Glory be to God. Or inconvenience me and sometimes others, because I'll have to call them and say, I'm sorry, I can't meet today. Why? Because he desires that communication. He desires that communion. He desires that I do something that pleases him. Not that the other isn't good. Lord, what would you have for me to do this morning? That is what's central to him. 
It says, we aren't distinguished from the world because of our moral code or our theology. See, the Pharisees and, and Sadducees, they thought they, they thought they had it going on because of their position. But Peter and John, the ignorant and unlearned, hallelujah, they the ones that really had it going on. They the ones, because they were in his presence. We are unique because God lives in us and with us, hallelujah, and shares his heart with us. He says, I'll, I'll be in you. I'll be in you. Hallelujah. I'll lead you. I'll guide you. I'll speak to you. Glory to God. He says here, we live by revelation. In other words, God takes the cover off. And he reveals himself. He reveals his will. He reveals, hallelujah, his glory that takes us from faith to faith. We live by revelation, not by principles. We live by what God reveals unto us. We are guided. We are guided. The Bible says as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Led by, guided not self-directed. We are immersed in a relationship. God is a spirit and we are spirit beings and they that worship him, worship him. They must worship him. There's no other way. There's no other way. It's not by works of righteousness. But we that worship, we must worship in spirit and in truth. The truth that has been revealed to us by the spirit. That's what we're immersed in. Relationship with him. When we choose to live in full awareness of his presence. God is everywhere. David said, where can I flee from you, God? Nowhere. Nowhere. Because he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. And when we are aware of his presence everywhere, look what he says. Our spiritual senses opens up to hear and see new things. I love it. I love it. Oh, wait. Mm, mm, mm. When I think on God's goodness, hallelujah. And when I think, say to God, when you have a desire, when you have a yearning, see, you, you gotta, you gotta want it. <coughs> you gotta you have to have a strong desire for his presence. Not, not just the Sunday morning feel good presence or Friday night. No, you've got to want to be where he is. Hallelujah. And he, you know what he said? If you draw nigh to me, if you draw nigh to me, if you lean in, he says, I'll draw nigh to you. I'll lean in too. Hallelujah. And when we get into that place, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I'm going to tell you, he will open up your spiritual senses and you'll begin to see things and know things from his perspective not your own, not media's perspective, hallelujah, not what other folks, but him. He will open you up to that. I love him today. 
Hallelujah. I had so many other scriptures here written down, but we're not going to get to them. Hallelujah. He says in the closing prayer, Lord, let me never watch this now. My God. Let me never confuse your voice with mere religious principles and ideals. Let me never confuse. See, you may have a way of doing things and you've been doing it for so long. Hallelujah. And, and, and it's been working for you. But how about if God want to do something new? How about if God wants to do something new? Are we so stuck on our own principles? And and I do, let me tell you something. Anybody that that know anything about pastoring and leading a group of people and 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 see when you've been in it sometime, every now and then you got to go back and say, you know what? I didn't have the full revelation of that then, but I have a better relation uh, 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 relationship or revelation now. And so we got to go back and bring the people up. See, because where we were then, where I was in 2000 is not where I am in 2022. And the things that I taught in 2000, hallelujah, I have greater revelation about it in 2022. And, and the whole truth of the matter is, well, we're, we're only going to know in part anyway. But it's the part that he reveals to us. And the more that we dwell in his presence, the more he opens up to us, the more we see, the more that we hear, and the more we understand. So he says, never let me confuse your voice with mere religious principles and ideals. Help me always focus on your living presence. Let me tell you, it matters when I'm driving in the in the road, knowing he's with me. It matter. It matters how I treat the driver to the left or to the right of me. It matters when I'm in the grocery store. It matters. It matters wherever I am in knowing that his presence is there. And because his presence is there, I'm not like everybody else. I'm unique, uniquely his, uniquely led by his spirit. Hallelujah. Help me always to focus on your living presence and your voice above all else. What's he saying to you? What's he speaking to you when you're in his presence? You are far more than a belief. Yes, you are, Lord. You're far more because devils believe and tremble. You are for far, far more than a belief. You are my life. You are my life. God bless you this morning. Mm -hmm. Y'all know. See, that's why I be trying to get y'all to do this so that I don't take up the whole hour. Uh, Sister Tierra, if you're there, will you close us in prayer with our mountain of business and then we'll open it up if anyone wants to make comment. Okay, no problem. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Loud and clear. Awesome. Awesome. Dear God, we come to you today with bowed heads and humble hearts. Just thankful, Lord God, for this day and this opportunity that you have blessed us with, Lord God. 
Father God, we come to you today just uh, thankful, Lord God, that you that you brought us all together, Lord God, to just be able to to start our day with you, Lord God, and to just be able to move forth in your presence, Lord. Father God, as we go throughout this uh, this day today, Lord God, we just want to lift up kingdom businesses to you, Lord God. Yes, Father God, Jesus. asking that you just bless kingdom businesses, Lord. Father God, asking that you just send your Holy Spirit to, to just bless every business owner, Lord God. Father God, just bless us, Lord God, and just help us to make sure that we're living in your in your will, Lord God. Father yes. God, bless our businesses, Lord God, to make sure that we are worshiping and honoring you, Lord God. Father God, bless our businesses, Lord God, so that we can make sure, Lord God, that you are getting all of the glory, Lord, <clears throat> and yeah. none of it goes to us, Lord God. Father God, bless our businesses, Lord God, so that our so that your will can be done through us, God. Here in the <laughs> Father God, remove us, remove, remove our flesh, Lord God, <clears throat> and help us to hear you, Lord God, so that we can walk out your walk out your plans, Lord God, for our lives every day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 For those of you that are entrepreneurs or are um have a desire. I got a book here on my shelf I'm going to recommend to you. Uh, actually, it's two of them. It's two of them. Tier, if you will put these in um, the chat box. One is called Doing Business God's Way. The author's last name is Bynes, B-Y-N-E-S. And she also has a book called Grace Over Grind. Grace Over Grind. So I recommend those two, Doing Business God's Way and Grace Over Grind. If And, and this just shows how to um, do business with a kingdom perspective. And how the grace of God, hallelujah, empowers you that you don't have to grind like the world does. All right. That you'll have time for his presence. All right. We're going to open up the line if anyone wants to say anything. Um, 